Hi guys and welcome to another Instagram tutorial. As I mentioned in one of the community posts, I'll make a small series where I cover some of the notes that Instanite has to offer and I'll show you how you can use them and some workflows as well as use cases. And I'll try to keep the videos a bit shorter so there's not too much input. And today I wanted to start with Laftel notes. We are gonna use the brick generator as our basis so I thought I I'll cover this note as well as it's really powerful. So let's start with the brick generator first. The brick generator is a very powerful note which you can use for every kind of brick walls or pavements and it has to offer many settings and possibilities what you can do with it. So when we look into the graph object editor we have our inputs. Currently we have the default input for our brick but we could also use a different shape. So let's use a brick generator here, set it to grayscale and input it as brick. So as you can see, the output of the brick generator changed to this shape, but for an easier understanding, let's keep it simple. So we just use the brick generator as is. And we have different modes here. I think this is one of the most interesting features of the node as when you have a material when you have created a material, you can easily make different var variations of it by just changing the mode. So we have a default mode, which are those bricks, basically. Um, if you adjust the count, you can make them wider or, or higher so that we have something that resembles a bit more bricks. Let's change to default for now. So the herringbone pattern is something like this, which is great for pavement. I think such a pattern is well known. Then we have diamond, octagon, basket weave, Spanish bond, L bond, random, and tumble. So those are really useful patterns, as I mentioned. I think this is also nice for a pavement, for example. So when you make a brick wall, you can also make a brick pavement from it with just one setting. And with all of those shapes, you have all the parameters, of course, so you can adjust them to your liking. But let's keep it at default for now. So as you saw, we have a count to make it smaller or bigger. When we disable the lock here, you can scale on one axis only. We have a count multiplier, which also is quite nice for some variation. The repeat, no, uh, the repeat parameter will also give you some more variation for your output. This node actually features a Floodfill output, so you don't need a Floodfill node. We will cover this later. So we have one built in already, which is quite nice because like this you would have to make adjustments as Floodfill needs a binary mask. You would have to put it into a grayscale to mask node and then input it into the flood fill, but like this you could just use flood fill nodes like, sorry, flood fill gradient for example. But let's disable it for now. Let's look at the other parameters a bit. We have a bevel parameter. I won't go into the filtering too much, but you have different image filtering options like bilinear, smooth, bilinear, and nearest. These are basically just quality settings. Let's say bilinear. You can adjust the bevel variance, the roundness of the brick, the rotation variance. We can enable a diagonal pattern. 
As you can see, it already looks quite nice just by the note itself. So this is a really great starting point for any kind of walls or pavements. We can change the luminance. You can use default or just by row, so you get a nice gradient basically. Column and by size. We can mask the patterns out. We can do so by just the density mode, or we could input an image, for example. So this could be based on a noise. Let's reset it. And also different settings as column, row, row and column, checkerboard. So you have a nice checkerboard pattern here. We can invert it. We have some offset settings. Repeat period. Variance as well. You can choose the vertical offset. The settings under pattern are UV based and won't do much on a shape like this. So let's import an arrow for example to show it. So as you can see, the, all the tiles are facing up with the arrow and when we use the rotation mode for example and set it to checker mode, uh, checkerboard. The UV, uh, the arrow is facing based on a checkerboard. So there I go up to the right, up to the right, up to the right. We can change the variance. We can use the flip mode. We can also use a cliche, for example. And we have all the settings as well. Let's go to the size and let's delete the arrow again. So for the size we have settings like the gap size. We can also scale on both axes separately if we disable the lock. Can set a gap variance, split position. Split variance again, the split threshold, and split repeat, repeat period. Let's set them to default again, and let's go to slope. So here we have slope variance, balance, and rotation variance. So these are mostly effects which you would do with a flat fill node to apply those effects on a binary mask and we have all built in in the brick generator. So again this node is really great as a starting point for bricks and such. So initially I wanted to cover the brick generator and the flat fill nodes in this tutorial but after recording I saw that the video got quite long again. So I think for this video we're gonna just cover the brick generator and the fluffle nodes in the next one. So thanks for watching and if you have any questions left just ask in the comments and I try to answer what I can. So see you next time.